In a previous video, I discussed the difference between uh, static classes and non-static classes and a little bit about static methods versus non-static methods. Um, and I think it's probably a little bit more clear on why you would have a class that's completely static, um, maybe something like math, where you have things like math.pow um, and uh, 2.4, something like that. And you would just be referencing the static class math and a static method pow, and it would do some sort of function. Um, or you would have, like in our example, the person class, and you're creating instances of of people or of the class person and each person has their own attributes or properties. What's probably a little confusing is what's the use case where you have a class that is um, non-static but does have at least some static properties. And I'm going to walk through an example, a basic example where I show how you might use something like that. So let's create a class car. And we're going to start off, uh, this is a non-static class, and we're going to give it a property of color. So let's do um, public string color, and we'll do get set. And that should be enough where we could say car uh, a equals new car and then console dot we'll say a dot color equals red and because this is a property we'll make that capital um, and car B equals new car B dot color equals blue right line A dot color console dot right line B dot color And if we run this, we should see uh, oops. we run this, we should see that you have uh, created two instances of cars. Um, you have an A object and a B object of type car and we display their colors. So this is a standard non-static class, pretty straightforward using uh, a property. Now what we could do is, what? let's say we wanted to keep track of the number of cars that we created. Well, a static property would be a good way to do that. So we're going to create a public um, property, static int count get set. And we're going to keep track of how many cars that we create. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a static constructor. Um, and the static constructor will initialize the value of count. So to create a static constructor, static, um, and then the name of the class, uh, and we're just going to say count equals zero. So we're going to start with zero cars. And because this is static, if we wanted to see the value of it now, console.writeLine, we would use the class name car, because you can't create an instance of, of this. Uh, and we would say count. So we're going to show the count after we need some colon. All right, so we have a count of zero. 
Now, the question is, how would we keep track of it? Well, we need to increment count every time an instance of the class car is created. Well, what would we use for that? Well, we would use the constructor, the non-static constructor. So this is the static constructor, and we'll use the non-static. I'm just going to call it normal constructor. Probably not the precise name or it, but uh, it's what we want right now. So we're going to have to make a public constructor of car. And every time this car instance is created, we want to increment our count. And so now what we can do is we will output the value of the count of cars initially, then we're going to create our first car, and we will um, display that. So here we'll say console.write line creating car one. And then after we create car one, um, we will output the count. And in a similar fashion, we'll copy this, creating car two. And we will output our count. Um, and then at the end, we'll, we're keeping the output of the colors. So if we do this, I'm missing semicolons, 40, 35, ah. And so we run again. So we have initial value of zero. And then we create our car by creating an instance of the car type. This instance of a car type has a property that's non-static, uh, which is color. We assign that color. And then we access the static property of count. And we see that, in fact, it has been incremented. And that was done because our normal constructor constructor incremented the static value associated with this class. Um, and then similarly, we create another instance of car, and we assign that a color, uh, a non-static property. And then we output the, the car count. And once again, because our normal constructor increments the count, um, we are able to see uh, that the count does increase. And then at the end, we're just outputting specific uh, non-static properties about our uh, A object and B object, which are instances of type car. Um, so I think that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of how you might make a class that has both static and non-static properties.